and uh, thank you for coming out and showing your support. Uh, my name is Spencer Jones. I'm the chairman of the Republican Party here in Muhlenberg County. I probably don't have to tell you that the uh, uncertainty of the coal industry these days, uh, electing Allison Grimes would only make it worse. Her yeah. first vote is going to be to keep Perry Reed in charge. That's the same guy who said coal makes you sick. <laughs> it's obvious to me and should be obvious to every hard-working man and woman here in Kentucky that Obama needs Grimes and Kentucky needs McConnell. I want to thank all of you for being out here today. I don't think that anyone needs to tell us that America is being challenged today by the poor leadership of Barack Obama. As a matter of fact, he's moving America in the wrong direction. And we don't need to be reminded about his drawing the land, land, line in the sand in Syria, Benghazi, using the IRS to go after groups he doesn't agree with. But nowhere has it been more egregious than what he's trying to do to the coal industry. America is one of only two countries in the world where you cannot even build a new coal plant because this administration adopted regulations that set the emission standards so stringent that the technology is not even available to use to meet the standards. He's standard. already proposed a regulation that EPA, for the first time ever, will be setting the standard for every state in America on the CO2 emission of existing and if there's ever a time we needed to change leadership in Washington, D.C., it's today. Now, Barack Obama said recently, this election is about him and his policies. Barack Obama, as Spencer says, needs Allison Grimes. But Kentucky needs Mitch McConnell. And I want to start by reminding you of what a great congressman you have. Now, well, that's going to be... going to be chairman in the next couple of years of one of the most important committees in the House. You know Hal Rogers is always already chairman of the Appropriations Committee. The only thing would be better than that would be to have the majority leader of the Senate. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know why you're here today. You're not here for me. You're here about, because you're worried about your country. This administration's done a lot of damage to America. You know the first two years they had total control of Congress, the trillion dollar stimulus, Take over of American health care, Obamacare, any friends in financial services, Dodd-Frank, Obamacare for banks, so you understand what that is. And of course the war on coal that Ed was talking about. The ultimate assault on Kentucky and America. You know, 40% of America's electricity comes from coal-fired generation. What is this all about? Well, these geniuses in the White House, you know, most of them went to Ivy League schools. So they were either college professors or community organizers. They look down their noses at us. They think we're all a bunch of rubes who need to be told how to lead our lives. So these geniuses couldn't get this through the Congress the first two years of the president's tenure when he cut total control of Congress and passed all that other stuff. Couldn't get this through. But now they're going to do it through the EPA. None of your elected officials have voted for this. They're going to do it through the EPA and stuff it down our throats. They've already killed 7,000 coal mining jobs in eastern Kentucky. For every coal mining job, you know, you lose three more. We're in the west Kentucky coal fields today. They're coming your way because there won't be any need for this coal if we don't have the generators to burn it. They're completely and totally anti-coal. You know what this is about. <coughs> Global CO2 emissions. Global CO2 emissions. You notice the first word I said was global. So if they were going to have, even if you thought this was an important issue, and even if you thought it ought to be addressed, you'd have to agree it had to be addressed on a pretty broad basis. So let me give you a run around the, the industrialized world. In Europe, where this whole movement started, they're now importing coal. In China, they're building coal plants. In India, listen to this, in India, they've declared Greenpeace, that organization Greenpeace, 
a disaster for their economy and announced they're not limiting CO2 emissions. And the Australians, who in a fit of left-wing fervor a couple of years ago passed a carbon tax, just repealed it. So even if you thought this was an important issue, our country going down this path all by itself is going to have about as much impact as dropping a pebble in the ocean. This crusade is all pain for us and no gain, even if you thought it was an important issue. Another reason why these people need to be stopped. We've had an explosion of government over the last six years. The spending, the borrowing, the taxing, the overregulation. We've added more debt during the Obama years than all the presidents from George Washington down to George Bush. Now, one thing I want to tell you is I have finally discovered something my opponent and I agree on. <laughs> We agree that she's a new face. <laughs> but you should ask your friends the following question. A new face to do what? A new face to vote for Barack Obama's agenda? A new face to make Harry Reid the majority leader of the Senate? She's a new face for the status quo. So people who are satisfied with where we are in America today, who like this agenda that the president set, who think Harry Reid's a great majority leader of the Senate, they ought to vote for her. Because change, my friends, is not how new you are. Change is where you want to go, and I want to take America in a different direction. Okay, I want to talk a little bit for a few minutes here about the significance of having the majority leader of the Senate from our state. We've had one other in our whole history, Alvin Barkley, who led the Democrats in the 30s and the 40s. Now, of course, Kentucky's basketball country, but we've got a few football fans here in the audience. And a way to look at the difference between leading the minority and leading the majority is the minority leader is the defensive coordinator. And you, you all know it's harder to score on defense. You can do it occasionally, but it's a lot harder to score on defense. The offensive coordinator gets to call the plays, set the agenda, and has a better chance of putting points on the board. So if I'm the offensive coordinator instead of the defensive coordinator next year, somebody from our state, for only the second time in history, will be setting the agenda for the country and, more importantly, looking out for Kentucky's interests on a daily basis. Nobody... Every senator has one vote, but every senator is not equal in influence. And I'll illustrate that with a little story you might enjoy about when I first got there. I was 99th out of 100 in seniority. Now, we don't do everything on a seniority basis. My leadership job is not based on seniority. It's an election of the conference. And I'm proud that I've been elected four times without opposition by my colleagues to be their leader. Woo! on a seniority basis, up to and including the location of our desk on the Senate floor. So it won't surprise you to know I have a, I had the very last desk all the way over in the corner where the light's not even very really good. Usually we don't sit where we're supposed to, but every once in a while, you sit where you're supposed to. And the first time that happened to me in my career, there I was all the way over in the corner where the light's not very good. Everybody was sitting where they were supposed to. I remember looking around the room, and thinking to myself, none of these people are ever going to die. <laughs> retire or be defeated. But alas, I've got the second best seat in the house now. And with your help, we can have the best seat in the house next time. But I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. This is not about me. This is not about me. This is about you. This is about you. And what kind of country you want to have. I'm simply deputized by your support to go to Washington and try to take America in the direction you'd like to see it go. So this is really about you, my friend. What kind of state do we want to have? What kind of America do we want to have? We need to go in a different direction. And so this is the opportunity to begin to do that. Doesn't solve every problem. The president's still there for two more years, but it begins to move America in a different direction. Big campaign, right? 
I run into people every day who say, good grief, why are you having such a race? Some of my supporters who've been around a while remember the last time I ran before I got to be leader of my party in the Senate, I carried 113 out of 120 counties and got 64% of the vote. And some of them even remember the time before that I beat Governor Bashir by 10 points, which is a landslide. So they say, what's going on here? Well, let me explain it to you. I got a whole new bunch of people out there across the country who don't wish me well. <laughs> and they're all sending money to my opponent. They don't even know who she is, but they know who I am. So this is a big battle, countrywide battle, about the future of the country. There's nobody Barack Obama wants to be worse than Mitch McConnell and nobody who wants him to have a bad night more than I do in you. <laughs> this race, you'll get a kick out of what I'm about to tell you. Not only the eyes of our country on this race, but other countries as well. Right. Yesterday, I was up, the day before yesterday, I was up in Northeast Kentucky. At one stop, there was a reporter there from Norway. Wow. At the next stop, there was a reporter there from Denmark. A few weeks ago, I was riding in the Black Gold Festival Parade in Hazard. And a young reporter came over to me and wanted to interview me, and I said, who are you with? And she said, Al Jazeera. <laughs> so you get the drift. You know, we are in the middle of the biggest race in the country because the stakes are enormous. And everybody's watching to see what Kentucky is going to do because they think there's a chance Kentucky may lead the nation. I don't know whether he really said it or not, but it's been so widely attributed to him that I think he probably did. And that's what Winston Churchill said about America. He said, you know, Americans, they always do the right thing after they've tried everything else first. <laughs> this crowd has been everything else first for the last six years. We're going to go in a different direction starting a week from Tuesday. You know, at one of these big campaigns, you gradually run out of things to do. You raise all the money you can raise. You bought all the TV and radio time you can buy. You dropped all the mail pieces you can drop. And things gradually move from the headquarters out into the field. We have identified over the last year and a half more than enough Kentuckians who are for me to win this race. They're out there. They are. The question is, will they vote? And at this stage of the game, you guys become really important. And I'm asking you, not for me, but for you, to try to influence everybody you can who wants to change America, who wants to go in a different direction, to help us get the job done. Now, I know Muhlenberg County is a tough county, but the coal issue has changed a lot of minds all over the state. You tell them. There's no confusion. No confusion whatsoever about who's trying to kill the coal industry. This is a Democratic presidential initiative. Not passed by the Congress. Implemented by him. And the people of Muhlenberg County have a chance here today to stand up to this crazy policy, to push back against it, and to help us change America. Thank you so much.